Okay, guys, now we're getting to one that's quite a bit personal, but let's see if we can all make our sheet look good because we're working on the technical aspect of our spreadsheet now um, where we need to design it to actually look good and improve readability. So if we look at the description here, we want appropriate formatting techniques, things like borders, shading, font alignment. We want good layout, easy to read and interpret, meaning row and column headings need to stand out. And most importantly, the format should contribute to readability. Okay. And it needs to look professional. It can't look like a joke. Okay. So it needs to look like a professional report that you could give to a CEO or something, someone. Okay. All right. So the first thing we need to do is let's rename our worksheet because uh, our workbook in the spreadsheet, what we're doing now is we are not actually really just working with our responses anymore. We're actually analyzing it now. We're processing it. So you need to rename it to something suitable, probably a little bit shorter, because this is not just the responses anymore. This is not the answer any. We're actually working with it now. Re rename it to something suitable now. So once you've done that, let's go ahead and open it up. And we need to create a sheet for everything that we're going to be doing and also name those sheets. So what we'll be doing is we have our form responses. I think you can keep that as it is. Um, and what we'll also be doing is we will be analyzing it or processing it. We'll be doing graphs and we might, it depends on whether you're going to go for that one mark extra, be working with other data. So, ons gaan dit verwerk of analyseer, ons gaan grafieke maak en ons gaan werk met ander data, as jy vir die een punt gaan. Now, we need to start with the formatting. The first thing we need to do is just check what your phase one formatting color scheme was. So, go to your phase one, look on the design tab, if you're lucky, the theme, you can actually do the exact same theme. Otherwise, go and check on the colors tab or the colors button. And you can check here what colors you used. I used the red orange color. It's quite difficult to see. You need to check very closely. There's actually like a little border around it. And if you used a custom font set as well, you need to go and check over here whether there's one selected. I can see mine doesn't actually show one. So, um, I'm just going to stick with the font that I've got in the spreadsheet now. All right, so go ahead and go to your page layout tab and change it to the same colors and fonts than you have in your uh, phase one document. This by itself won't have changed anything. The only thing it will do is it'll, it'll give you the colors available to be able to work that it looks similar to this to the phase one file. Now, we need to apply borders, shading, and make our column headings stand out because this going this is going to help readability. Okay, so you can get some ideas from the format as table tab, but I'd really recommend that you don't use this because there are so many other issues that comes along with using this. It makes it behave like a table and it actually has lots of issues when you do this. But you'll see here, it gives you some great ideas about how you can format it. I just want to warn you, if you use alternate row colors, it actually is an issue, especially if you copy down any kind of functions that you do in the table. So something like this will definitely make your life easier. And we'll be applying this formatting to all the columns, even the columns that we're planning on using in Access, because the reason we haven't deleted them yet is we might keep and use some of them. And we're only going to remove the ones we ended up not using. I know lots of people have forgotten how borders work. So just so you know, you need to go and click on more borders over here right, and click on more borders. You could also right click and go to format cells once you've selected the cells you want to apply borders to. And you can go and choose a color here that works for you. Once you've chosen that, whatever you choose here, let's say I want to do a little fine line. I actually first need to go and click where I need to apply it. It won't just automatically apply. And then I can say, okay. 
All right, we're making progress. Now, just so that you know, consistent means it actually looks cohesive throughout your spreadsheet. And that includes the other sheets as well. So something like this, even though it's actually all in the color scheme of your design, is definitely not acceptable. It doesn't look professional and it's just not going to work. So if you, did, if you did something like that, please go and use your Filmit Painter and just fix it. Freeze panes is a way you can let your heading stay consistent. Now, this should have actually automatically been applied if you imported your sheet from Google Forms. But if it didn't, you can go to View, Freeze Panes and change it over here. Please keep that in mind when you do your functions so that you can be sure each time that you actually start at row two and not at a later row. If you want, you can maybe make your row two or bold or something so that you remember to go all the way to the top each time. Just remember to remove that before you hand it in. Now, wrapping long text is really important for the headings especially so that we can actually see what the heading says. If your questions were really long, it'll really be better if you can just reword it to five to six words so that it's easier to use as headings. If you've wrapped it and it didn't actually increase the size of the row, you remember you can actually click on the size of the row, either double click between one and two with your two headed arrow, or you can go to format and auto fit row height. Here you'll see a good example of a question that's really too long and that needs to be shortened. You need to consider data types such as currency, especially if you have a question like that. Look at things like alignment as well and look at the sizes of your columns. Something like this age column really doesn't need to be that big. And you need to see if you can fit all your columns slightly better that you don't have to scroll terribly long. If you had a question that really had a long answer, I would recommend that you rather wrap that question as well. I would recommend that you ask your teacher whether they insist that you use conditional formatting. In this next section, I'm going to show you how to use just regular conditional formatting, like you've learned in grade 11. And then I'm going to show you much more advanced conditional formatting that's actually really useful, not just for the PAT, but also for the exam situations because they've started asking it quite complicated. So this is actually really not just for the PAT. It could help you a lot. But if you're running short on time and your teacher doesn't require this for PAT, then by all means, you can finish this video now and you don't need it to complete video four. The conditional formatting, if you need it, I would really recommend that you only use it where it makes sense. Um, you won't be using conditional formatting for something such as gender. Okay. It has to be something that relates to the study that you're doing at the moment or the research that you're doing at the moment. So, for example, this one was about the effects of COVID on the corporate sector. So a suitable conditional formatting would maybe be to, to lift out the respondents that specifically work in the corporate sector. So I'm going to select this column, conditional formatting, and I'm going to just show the ones that work in the corporate sector. And it'll be a good idea to actually change the formatting to something that matches your format. You can clear what's already done over here, and then you can choose something that is closer related to your format. If you wanted to do something more advanced, this is the first level up, you could actually select the whole row to be formatted depending on something like the work sector. So I'm going to undo that. And in this instance, I'm going to select all the data, but not the headings. Now we're going to conditional formatting and we're making a new rule based on a formula. The formula is we want the work sector to be equal to corporate. And we're changing the format to what I've just done. Okay, but that doesn't look like it's working. Hey, it shouldn't be selecting everything. The problem is at the moment, what I've done 
is I've said the whole sheet should be formatted according to this one cell. Okay, so that's not going to work. I need to change this absolute cell referencing. Now, just a heads up, if you're working with this formula box as you would in general with a formula bar at the top, you can't use your left and right arrows like you normally would. You'll see it actually adds cells if you do that. So you have to click exactly where you want to work and then press your backspace if you need to. Let's try and see what happens if we remove the absolute cell referencing completely. Okay, that works, but I actually didn't want the timestamp to be formatted. I wanted the whole row to be formatted based on the work sector. Right, so the reason this is happening is it's comparing the whole row, but I haven't actually specified that it should be locked on column E. So it works on row 2 and 3 and 4 and 5, so the rows are able to adapt but it's also adapting the columns. So it's also adjusting the columns where I actually don't want it to adjust the columns. I want the column to remain the same. So if I change the formula and I just apply the absolute cell referencing to the column letter and not to the row number, then I'm going to have my output that I want. Okay, so that's the first level up. Now we're going to look at the next level up that actually takes it to the really to the next level. And that's where we apply logical tests. Now we've done a logical test. Now this was just a regular single logical test, like saying basically an if. Now we want to compare two columns. So this is basically like doing a count if. But in this instance, we want a formatting instead of actually counting how many things. Now this is great for actually looking at data that you want to talk about in your final report. So we're comparing the data and we're looking for patterns, patterns that are interesting, patterns that doesn't really make sense, or patterns where you can draw interesting conclusions. So in this instance, we had a question about whether they were able to retain their work-life balance and many people actually said yes. But it's interesting that some people who said no worked an additional three hours, whereas other people who said yes also worked an additional three hours. So it's interesting that some people's tolerance for the number of additional hours they work a day is actually a lot more than others. We could even compare this to the gender. Let's actually see whether there's a difference, this was also, okay, they were both female, so there wasn't really a big difference in that. But you could actually compare all three columns, those three. In this instance, I'm just going to stick with two columns. So I'm going to look at these two columns, but I also want to format the whole row. Oh, let's not overdo it. I'm just going to format these two columns. Right. So I'm going to go to conditional formatting, new rule, and it's a formula. And in this instance, I'm going to use an AND statement so that both the conditions need to be true before something is formatted. So now I'm going to put two logical tests in. The first thing will be, did they say the work-life balance needs to be, was actually yes, was retained? And secondly, did they say the additional work hours was more than two. Those are the ones that I think are actually quite odd and that it's actually unbalanced. I'm going to change the format and remember to remove my absolute cell referencing only from the rows and then I can say OK. And now I can see which one of those actually has a very unbalanced view. Now, just a note, something that sometimes happens, and I haven't really been able to figure out when it does, is when you apply conditional formatting, it sometimes changes the rows as you were busy working with it and you didn't notice. So, for example, when I was trying this earlier, I really did it perfectly. Um, and when I went back in, because I saw there was no output, it actually changed the row reference of this AND 
in both instances to way down in the sheet, like a cell something, 10,000 something, something. So then you just need to go back in and check if your cell references are still correct. Okay, so if that tickles your fancy and you're up for the challenge, have a look and see if you can get that right and highlight some patterns in your data. Okay, so what we've done now is we've got a separate worksheet for our results. We have a well-designed layout and heading and borders. We've formatted it really well that it's easy to read, consistent, and it's easy to read and interpret.